I'm From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Butte's landmark head frames will be shining even brighter. I'll tell you why coming up. Stormy Daniels takes the stand in former President Donald Trump's New York criminal trial. I'm Jared Hill with her salacious testimony and how legal experts say this fits into the historic case. I'm Megan Thompson here in a room in an old house in Uptown Butte that once belonged to a famous author named Mary McLean. And coming right up, we'll talk to the person who's in charge of restoring the home. Alrighty, it is six o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Jade McDonald and Matt Elwell with you, and I hope everyone didn't put away that yeah. winter coat just yet because today you may just want it. Nasty conditions, Oof. especially at pass level. Uh, we've had reports of disabled a disabled vehicle, mm -hmm. both lanes blocked, uh, both directions right. since about midnight. Mm -hmm. Think about sitting in your car for five to six hours and not going anywhere. It, it's just hard to imagine. While it continues to snow up on Bozeman Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, temperatures this morning generally seeing low 30s, um, cool enough that we are seeing some snow accumulate on our area roadways. The worst of this is um, basically moving through now and then by about the noon hour we'll see a rain snow mix. Uh, still a good chance we'll see some snow uh, pushing back through the area. Skies do begin to clear as you head into the evening. Uh, at least uh, the moisture will slow down. Daytime highs into the upper 30s and low 40s for the area. Expect slick and slushy conditions to start the morning. We will update you on anything that we learn on some of the road conditions here coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Now, right off the top this morning, we have some of those school elections coming in. Now, we're going to start over in the Silver Bow County area. And just a reminder that this is all the unofficial count for these elections. Now, the elementary trustee will be Michael Kujawa with 4,671 votes. And now for the levies and the proposals. The elementary general fund passed by about 600 votes, but an interesting one that we're going to be keeping our eye on is the high school building reserve safety levy, which seems to be in gridlock at the same number of votes for and against it, 3,782 votes. Now keep following us online and on air. Again, this is an unofficial count of those election results. Now, moving over to Gallatin County, the $60.5 million bond for the Belgrade School District for a new elementary and renovations to the middle school did not pass. The Bozeman School District asked for more than $600,000 in operating levies, including $250,000 for the elementary district and $430,000 for the high school district. These operating levies did end up passing. Three Forks School District's general fund levy to raise over $680,000 both failed for the elementary and for the high school district. Now we're going to have the rest of the results on our website as they come in, so go ahead and check us out at kbzk or kxlove.com. But over in the mining city, Butte's head frames are getting spruced up with some new lights. MTN's John Amy tells us about this upgrade to Butte's iconic mining structures. It was 20 years ago when Butte's iconic head frames were first decorated in lights. And now, thanks to a generous donation, the head frames on the richest hill will sparkle again. I wanted to honor the, the people that have worked in them and uh, what they represent to Butte. They're just iconic symbols of the community. Butte first put up the red lights on most of the head frames in 2003 to make them stand out in the evenings. We, we were told in 2003, you know, we, we, can, we can put these on. These lights have a guarantee of about five years and it's been 21 years. The lights have experienced plenty of wear in that time and Town Pump has donated about $37,000 to replace the lights on the Travonia head frame and is paying $45,000 each for lights on the original and steward head frames. Of course, one of our goals and objectives was wanting to make sure these were done before the start of festival season. High Country Lighting was contracted to install the lights. This is one of the larger and more difficult custom projects that we've ever done. Between the 85 foot lifts and 130 foot cranes that we're having to use to get up and, and accomplish this project, it's making it quite a feat. Markovich Construction provided the lifts to help put up the lights. Unlike the prior lights, these new lights 
can do many different patterns. St. Patrick's Day, Christmas, Easter, anything that you want to put up there, we can do a different pattern. The goal is to eventually light up all the head frames. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Now to yesterday's explosive testimony and former President Trump's so-called hush money trial. Adult film star Stormy Daniels took the stand and gave what was at times very salacious details of her alleged sexual encounter with Trump nearly two decades ago. Trump is accused of falsifying business records to hide payments made to Daniels to keep her silent ahead of the 2016 election. Trump denies the affair and has pleaded not guilty to the charges. CBS News' Jared Hill has more on how the day unfolded from New York. A very revealing day. Former President Donald Trump due back in court tomorrow for day two of potentially explosive testimony from adult film star Stormy Daniels in his Manhattan criminal case. Under oath on the witness stand yesterday, Daniels recalled the details of their alleged 2006 sexual encounter, which Trump has denied. Daniels testified that Trump invited her to his hotel suite in Lake Tahoe. She said she asked Trump about his wife, Melania, and he said, quote, don't worry about it. We actually don't sleep in the same room. Daniels also said she wanted to share her story 10 years later, but was afraid, adding that she took the $130,000 payment from Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to stay quiet. Everything in this case is designed to get to Michael Cohen's testimony. He is really the only person that we know of who could give direct evidence about Donald Trump's involvement. In cross-examination, Trump's lawyers questioned Daniel's motives, asking if she hates the former president, to which she responded, yes. They asked if she wants Trump to go to jail. Her response, if he's found guilty, absolutely. This whole case is just a disaster. Trump seemed visibly frustrated during Daniel's testimony, which drew multiple objections from his lawyers. The defense asked for mistrial, accusing prosecutors of trying to embarrass the former president. The judge denied the motion, but acknowledged, quote, there were some things that are probably better left unsaid. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. And there were also new developments in former President Trump's Florida federal case regarding the alleged mishandling of classified materials at his Mar-a-Lago home. Judge Eileen Cannon announced that she is officially postponing the trial indefinitely. It was originally scheduled to begin later this month. Now a little bit closer to home, yesterday marked the third anniversary of a fire that destroyed a landmark Butte business. It was on the morning of May 7th, 2021, when people in Butte woke up to a fire at the M&M Bar and Cafe, an iconic establishment that had been located at 9th North Main Street for about 130 years. Though firefighters tried to save the building, the fire spread too rapidly through the walls and the historic structure was eventually demolished. However, the owner was able to rebuild the business next door and it has been operating since February of last year. She says business is booming in the new location. We're doing um, almost twice as much business. We have uh, 12 more staff than we had at the, the other location. Um, so yeah, it's definitely things have, have grown for us. The owner said she still plans to rebuild the M&M in the former location sometime in the future. And after almost two decades of persistence, a Butte man's mission to restore the home of a famous Butte author is making some progress. MTN's Megan Thompson introduces us to the man who is determined to save the 120-year-old home of the infamous Mary McLean. Well, this old room, located in a home that was built in the 1900s on Butte's Upper West Side, once belonged to a very famous female author named Mary McLean, and it's slowly getting restored back to its old self. It's important that we not just sort of let evidence of what she experienced fade away. Bill McGregor is a retired tech professor and owner of the Mary McLean House. He scooped up the property in 2006 when it was on the brink of demolition. We would have lost something because, I mean, if you look out the window here, you can really imagine Butte at the time. There's enough left here of the little houses that she writes about, the mine yards. They're, they're just right here. 
and from her window it it brings it back. Mary McLean's life story is full of extreme highs and lows and those experiences along with her surroundings in the turn of the century mining town informed the 19 year old's work. Her first novel scandalized the town and even the nation and her work was banned from the Butte Silver Bell Public Library. But the money she earned from the novel gave her a ticket to bigger cities. She was she was part of what made Butte Butte. I mean uh, we want to we want to talk about uh, the Copper Kings. We want to talk about uh, Evil Knievel. We want to talk about uh, uh, all sorts of notorious folks. Well, for a lot of people. Mary McLean is about as notorious as they get. With the help of grant funding from the Butte Citizens for Preservation and the Superfund Advisory and Redevelopment Trust Authority, or SARDA, Bill continues his preservation work. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. Thank you very much, Megan. 6-11 now, on to some health news. Norovirus, the highly contagious stomach bug, is still sticking around. The CDC reports cases remain high. Scripps News correspondent Larissa Scott has an update for us. Doctors continue to see cases of norovirus all across the country. Outbreaks typically surge after the winter holidays, go into the spring and then start to taper off. But cases remain high right now. Doctors consider norovirus to be one of the most prominent viruses for spring. According to the CDC, there have been more outbreaks reported this season than last season as the virus continues to stick around. A very small amount of it can make a person sick. And so that's one of the major reasons why it spread so quickly. You just need a little bit around and everybody gets sick. Norovirus is also known as the stomach bug, and it's difficult to avoid once it's around. In fact, it can take down entire households in a matter of hours. The most common symptoms include diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, and stomach pain. People can also have fever, headache, and body aches. If someone in your household has norovirus, doctors recommend isolating them if possible and avoid touching your face. Wash your hands with soap and water if you're having to care for someone with norovirus. With this virus, you have to be careful to avoid dehydration since it can be hard to keep anything down. Doctors say dehydration is an especially big concern for children. With norovirus, it's mainly supportive measures. You know, keep the child hydrated. If the child becoming dehydrated, we need to know about it, bring the child to the uh, to an emergency room. Norovirus is not airborne, but it's highly contagious. That's why hand washing is your best defense. The only thing you shouldn't use, though, is hand sanitizer because doctors say it doesn't work against this virus. The gel hand gel does um, preventing this for preventing norovirus as washing your hands with good old fashioned soap and water. And doctors say the most common places that people catch this virus are in schools, cruises and restaurants. Larissa Scott, Scripps News, Tampa. All right, 613 now. More than $3 million was raised during the event held last week with almost 6,000 donors giving big. 272 organizations benefited from this year's generosity, and this was the 10th year of the event, which raises funds for local nonprofit groups and organizations. All of our programs and services are completely free of charge, so that money will help us continue to be able to provide those crucial emotional support programs for cancer patients and their families in our valley. Almost 13,000 gifts were also donated during the Give Big event. Cancer Support Community Montana received 234 of those. Yeah, I love to see this community come together. I do too. It's such a great event held yep. every single year. Now, before we take a quick break, I wanted to share this with you. Speaking of giving, why not give a cupcake if you can? Yeah. If you just have one lying around the house, why the heck not? <laughs> because it is national Give a cupcake day. Oh, I like it. You know, a, a little sweet treat can go a long way, Matt. I would take one for breakfast. <laughs> I do, and I have before. I have before as <laughs> yes. well. So I it's mean, usually a leftover from the day before, but I'm, I'm totally okay with it at 530 in the morning. A hundred percent. Or sometimes I read the break room. Maybe the evening show got yep. some cupcakes and we can get those leftovers. That's right. <laughs> I love it. All right, 614. We're going to take a short break here on Montana this morning. But when we come back, People, there will be some dragons at the Montana Special Olympic State Games in Billings. 
and you know what? They couldn't be happier to be there. When we come back for Squirt Sports, we're going to meet some of the Dragon team members returning to the state games after being gone for the past three years.